Okay, so the next step that I mentioned is we're going to calculate the gravity effect due to topography. Um, it's kind of further down in the PowerPoint, it's slide 22, but I'd like to do it first because I think it just helps um, with the progression of things. And so we're going to be using this topo 05 degrees. Um, from what I can remember, if you go back to slide 17 over here, it just says the topo DTM is downloaded from the eTopo. Um, website, resolution of 1 degree, but for our exercise it's reduced, reduced to 0 0.5, um, so forth. Etopo, Equitopo is built using the program, um, we'll get to that just now, and the crust is assumed to have a density of 2.67 and water 1.03, and so yeah, that's where this um, topography comes from. So let's go back down here. Okay, and the next slide along, so we're going to use tesseroids here, so we create a tesseroid model for our area um, using the topography and using the density contrast and the grid spacing and we export this model file. We then choose what component are we going to calculate and first we're going to calculate GZ. This is, maybe it's just me, but this is where I sort of getting confused. So in the previous window when we were um, extracting the observed gravity from the um, satellite gravity data. We, the, the two options were, let me open it here, EGM08, two options down here was we used, we calculated the gravity normally and then we calculated TRR. And I think just where I started getting confused is I thought gravity normally here kind of correlated with potential and TR correlated with GZ and TRR correlated with GZZ, but it isn't. Um, the gravity anomaly is your GZ over here and your TRR is your GZZ here. So don't get confused, don't mix it up, don't click on potential. Um, so we're going to be calculating those. Here we um, set out the points at which we're going to calculate the gravity and then we're going to output the gravity file. So let's do it over here. So you go to, I have to remember, Tesseroids down here, so gravity menu, go down to tesseroids, and now your tesseroid model, you're going to have to navigate to this topo 05 degrees. I'm actually going to take it um, from the folder that I downloaded off of the internet and copy it onto that desktop folder that I have. I'm going to pause the video so you don't have to watch me going through the steps. Okay, so I'm in the folder I downloaded off of Google Drive, um, and you can see here, um, when I'm at this upper level with the three options of lecture notes, software, and tutorial, I go into software, and then there's a few subfolders, because there was a zip file, and then I go here into bin, and scroll down, and you're looking for topo, 05 degrees, um, and dot XYZ. I'm going to copy it and put it on my desktop. Also, it just saves me having to navigate through all those subfolders. Lift the flex, paste it here. Um, you can create a subfolder if you would like. So let's go back here to look this flex. I'm going to navigate to the desktop, and there's my topo 05. Okay, and let's just reduce this folder so you can see our PowerPoint PDF. Okay, and so our reference height here is zero because we're doing it relative to sea level. And so our density above this reference level, 2.67, is density of rock, so topography above sea level. Density of minus 1.1670 is the water, and it's below. Um, sea level. I know early in the PowerPoint we said it was 1.3, so I'm just going to use the default here of 1670. I think even here it says 1640. So your choice, just keep track of it. Um, grid spacing, don't forget to make it 0 0.5. It's got to be the same size as what we calculated the gravity at, so you can easily minus one from the other, and because that's the resolution we're working at. And then make sure GZ is clicked for the gravity anomaly and you can leave this as default and then make sure your coordinates are the same as what you used previously so mine was for south africa um, and then make change this weird station spacing number again to 0 0.5 remember that we said if you're using egm 208 you could use 0 0.05 but for ghost it's 0 0.5 
and then make sure that the height above um, the Earth radius is 250 kilometers. Okay, and then you can see it creates a position file for these calculation points. It automatically takes where you've put the original data and it saves it there. It's, and it does underscore P, I think for position file, dot X, Y, Z. And then lastly, an output, it uh, automatically calls it the same name with underscore G, don't know why G, and X, Y, Z. So we're going to look at this G one. And then you should be able to click execute. And it takes a bit of time. I'll push pause until it's finished. OK, and you click yes when it is done to return to the box. And let's see if it shows up in my folder here. OK, and there it is over there. And let's have a look at it in Surfer. OK, and I followed all the steps in the previous video to get through these plots. So check back on the video on how to load your maps into Surfer. And so you can see, obviously, there's higher topography over the continent and lower topography over the ocean. So that's why there's a negative gravity, because um, there's thinner crust over the oceans and it's thicker over the continent. And you can see here, this is the vertical derivative. It's showing a lot more detail because it's the derivative of the anomaly. You've seen this um, high due to the high topography here over the edge of the escarpment over the Lesotho area. And now what we're actually going to do um, is minus this lower one from the top one to get the Bouguet gravity. But before we do that, let's just change here. I've double clicked on this text because I want to change it. And this is for grab topo. Okay. And so the only problem, you can minus these grids from each other in um, Surfer. We just need to check, check out that their sizes are the same. So what you would do now, if, you, if it is going to work, you would go grid, grid math. Um, go down here and choose the one we want to take first to minus. So it's a spherical geocentric open and you can see it's loaded it as file A is the spherical geocentric file B I want to be the topography file okay so it's topo make sure you're choosing the gravity anomaly here not the derivative and then let's output it I'm just going to call it BA, Begay Anomaly, um, and for grab anomaly, not for the derivative, and click Save. And you can see at the bottom here, it's telling you what exactly is going to happen to your grid. So we're going to go A, change the plus to a minus B. And if you click OK and get an error, it's because they're different sizes. Let's see. No, I'm guessing grids must be the same size. And so I know um, if you open up the grid, so I'm just going to navigate here to my desktop where I've got the files and my little flex folder. You can check your grid sides by opening them up in um, what's it called Surfer and it'll give you the value. So I'm going to this topo underscore G one and I'm going to go right click open with Surfer. So in all honesty, if this is the case, the easier thing to actually do is to open them all in Geosoft and just do it in Geosoft. Uh, sorry for those of you who don't have Geosoft on their computers. Okay, sorry, it doesn't pop up Surfer. I keep on forgetting. You have to go to Surfer. Um, and you can see, so this is your topo, the gravity due to topography. If you click on the top right corner here, it shows you you've got 55 rows and 100 columns. If you do the same, let's just one. If you do the same with your grid, the spherical geocentric one, um, you'll see that they are, have a different number of cells, uh, rows and columns. So again, let's go back to Surfer. And if we click on this top right, it was 55 and 100. Now we've got 41 and 75. So I don't know why it does it, because I thought we had the same grid cell size with 0.5 and we had the same lat long. So maybe it clips it around the edges. 
So I'm going to now convert all of mine to GXF files and open them up into Geosoft and we'll take a look at how to minus it in Geosoft. Okay, so you can see all the grids here in Geosoft and we would go grid image, grid and image and grid math. Sure, my computer is super slow. Sorry guys. Um, and then let's just check where it's saving it. So I'm, I'm going to triple, I uh, click on this triple dot here, and I obviously want to go to that desktop folder uh, where I've been saving everything, this Lithoflex folder. And I'm going to call it BA Grab Anomaly. Um, Obviously, I can keep it as a, G a GSoft default file here because it's all in GSoft. But if you want to go take your stuff back into Surfer, which is maybe a good idea, you can scroll down here and do save type to Surfer version. I'm just going to do version 7. And I always type it here. And the reason why, Surfer 7, is because it saves it as a grid file. So when you open a normal folder, you've got all these grid files, and you're not sure which one's Surfer, which one's GSoft. So put it in your label. It really helps. And let's click Save. And then you're going to insert grid variable, do two of those, and click on the down arrow here. And the first one we're going to choose is the sphere geocentric, um, this is the gravity, uh, the ghost gravity. And the next one you're going to go down is to this topo G, so that's the gravity due to topography. And you're going to come up here and you're going to put a minus G1, minus G2, and it will give us G0. And let's click OK. And the answer pops up here. You can see this negative anomaly. Let's just quickly do it for the derivative and then we can compare them. So you can see GeoSoft um, is thankfully uh, helps deal with different size grids being minus from each other. So over here I'm going to just change this to TRR. I'm going to come here change that one to TRR and I'm going to change this one to GZZ and click OK. And there's also the negative. I'm just going to rearrange them on the screen so we can look at them. I'll just pause the video. Okay, so I've rearranged them and so you see this left hand column is the gravity, right hand column is the derivative. First one is the observed gravity that we got out of the satellite and this highs over the continent. You can see I don't have my outline. Then we've got these highs due to the topography. And then down here we've actually taken the first row minus the second row to get the third row. And obviously that's why we're getting this low because we've minused out this positive due to the high topography. And now you're starting to see this low. And this is the big anomaly, so it's stuff um, to do with what's going on in the crust. And um, also I suppose a bit deeper than that because we're especially here looking at the gra gravity gradient data. So we're looking at much deeper anomalies. And you'll see on the gravity of South Africa, I'll pick up a map, there's a, a big low over the craton over here. And um, it gets a bit higher around here on the mobile belt. And then obviously the highest here over the ocean where the crust is the thickest. And then the derivative here seems to focus it up here on around Lesotho where there is um, uh, quite you would assume quite deep moho here because you've got your highest topography and it's compensating but there actually isn't um, sufficient data in this area to tell us this so yeah very interesting to see your um, your results so the next step now that you could do is calculate the gravity due to the moho remove that and then ideally you're left with a residual gravity um, and just before we finished off, I loaded it back in Surfer just to check that the files are exported from GeoSoft work and they do. So here's your lows over the continent. Um, 